also shout out to Belle Raven. That's where these pants came from. My name is Michaela. Um, I am here with Save a Fox Rescue. I am the founder of a nonprofit wildlife, captive wildlife rescue. So what we do is we rescue animals from fur farms or captive situations. All the animals that we're going to show you here today are either rescued from fur farms or they are pet surrender animals that people bought from an exotic breeder and then realized they were too much work or that they didn't have permits to have them and then they give them up to us. We have here a mink, we have a fox over here, and we have a skunk and then some chinchillas. So I'm gonna be talking about our mink first. This is Chi Chi, everybody. She is a captive bred mink that came from a fur farm. The reason she is the color that she is is because she's been bred in captivity for so many generations. So her color variation is called a jaguar. And I'll take her out just real quick so everybody can see her and how she moves and how quick she is. When they breed these animals in the fur farms, they don't care about the genetic defects that might come with it because they only care about their fur quality. You gonna come? Come here. So here she is. She is a female, so this is the standard size for a female. She's very quick. <laughs> the males actually get to be twice her size. Twice her size. Very agile animals. I have to wait till she's not looking at my fingers so I can close the cage. There we go. So they are in the mustelid family. The mustelid family has uh, about 65 different species in it. And she's more closely related to otters because these guys are actually semi-aquatic animals. So you will see them swimming a lot. Um, they, you'll find them near rivers, near swamps, um, and... Water parks. Yeah. <laughs> they spend half of their life in the water, so they really, really like to swim, which is very opposite of ferrets because ferrets are land-dwelling animals and they prey on ducks and lots of aquatic animals since they spend a lot of time in the water. Unfortunately, these guys, since they come from fur farms, they never get the chance to swim. So these animals in the fur farms um, never get to live the life that they are meant to live. Do any of you guys have any questions about her? What's a fur farm? So that's a great question. A fur farm is a place that specifically raises animals for their pelts. Fur farms are very common in Wisconsin and in Minnesota, and it's unfortunate that they have to raise these animals and kill them just for their fur. So if you guys have ever heard of mink lashes, and a lot of people think that's just a fancy name, but it actually comes from these animals, and it's because they're producing them in fur farms and killing them for fur coats and makeup products and the feminine products. So we also try to educate people um, to make sure to look at labels on your makeup because these animals do suffer in the fur farms just for dress up and look nice. Any other questions? You can look nice without mink lashes. Yeah, or, or a mink coat. Next, we are going to introduce our fox over here, Thumbnail mouse. Oh. Caden was wondering what you were putting the gloves on for. Do you not see this vicious animal taking a nap here? <laughs> farm rescue. When we rescue animals from the fur farms, they're often giving these animals to us because there is something wrong with them. Get so this little fox over here, she's what they call anemic. She's underweight and her fur quality is bad and she likes to poop on people. Yeah. So. Way more likely to poop on you than fight. Hi mouse, how are you doing? Grab that box of places because this is your here. <laughs> She is a red fox, vulpus vulpus. Mouse specifically has what's 
similarly known in humans as Chediac syndrome. She has to take special medication, Anchorbed, one of them, that creates an enzyme that helps her digest food because her pancreas can't do it on her own. The likelihood of mouse dying without the medicine or stem cell therapy, which I'll talk about in a second, uh, would be months. So no good to a fur farmer, just put down and that's it. Michaela steps in through Save Fox and the donations we get through social media and such, able to afford or try our best to afford the medication. She requires stem cell therapy, so she has to get fatty tissue from other foxes, which Michaela brings those in from rescues or surrenders. Yeah, she's a lot of work, but it's she's the only a chance you got. Feisty little spitfire, for sure. She, she eats a lot, even though she doesn't look like it. She tries to keep up because her metabolism is is so fast and she can't, she doesn't get the proper nutrition that most foxes would. She also appears to be a baby, but she isn't. She'll be a year old this spring. All foxes are born in the spring and they're full grown by fall. And they typically range between eight and 15 pounds. And she's probably about, what do you think? Feeling her? 75 pounds. Really? No. <laughs> Five? Yeah. Yeah, so she's, she's about five pounds and she might not grow much more. So the fur farms don't have any use for foxes that don't at least hit the 10 pound mark because their pelts aren't going to be worth much, there's not going to be much pelt to them. I'm going to walk around and there's parts of this fox that don't have poop on it. Pets, if you'd like. And she doesn't bite, she's really shy, so yeah. she'll Worst just kind thing, of... She's gonna poop She is so cute. Yeah. Question? Is that your favorite? Maybe, yeah. I mean, Skunka has, Skunka basically brought me in. Yeah, his, his first volunteer job here with Save a Fox was helping us rescue the skunk. We had to fly down to Florida and then bring her back up to Minnesota. So she is our only animal here at this presentation that is a pet rescue. So a lot of the other ones came from, from fur farms and skunks aren't really in the fur farm industry, but we do also rescue from exotic pet owners that aren't taking care of their animals properly. She is a striped skunk. Skunks are native to Minnesota as well. She does have her scent glands removed. Skunks are actually fairly common in the exotic pet trade, so breeders will breed them and remove their scent glands and then sell them as pets. Skunks are typically supposed to be between 3 and 10 pounds, and she is not. <laughs> She's at least 12. And then if you notice, she has very long nails, and we actually trim these every three weeks. So in the wild, they are omnivores, so they do eat a lot of grubs. So they dig in tree trunks and dead wood to find bugs to eat. So their nails are constantly growing. And because she lives inside, her she doesn't have the opportunity to dig as much. So she has to have her nails trimmed quite often. So you guys can continue to ask questions. I'll come around to each table so you guys can pet the skunk if you want to. You don't have to if you don't want, but. If anyone has questions, just have Dalton ask. <laughs> He's on a roll. <laughs> Next, we got a couple chinchillas. Also, unfortunately, common in the fur industry. So this is Chloe. She didn't actually come from a fur farm. A lot of the fur industries for chinchillas are in Europe, so there isn't a lot of fur farming of chinchillas in the United States, thankfully. But they are the softest animal in the world. They're considered crepuscular, which means they are awake in the morning and the evening. Hey, you. They originate from, Ch from Chile. They live up in the Andes Mountains. And she also has a baby. <gasps> so this is a baby. <gasps> so this is <gasps> so this is her this is her baby, and a baby chinchilla is called a kit. 
chinchillas have babies about twice a year. They can have up to three. She usually only has one or two. Um, chinchillas like to live in colonies, so it's important that they have a lot of companions and friends. And then because chinchilla's fur is so soft and so dense, their fur can't get wet. So in the wild, chinchillas will roll around in dust and take dust baths. I actually brought a container with for her to take a dust bath. So this is her dust. We have to special order it. Very particular dust for chinchillas and it's very, very fine. Oh yeah. So that's what they do to soak up all the oils in their fur. And dust baths are very important for chinchillas. If they don't get dust baths or if they don't have access to that, they can get a really bad skin infection and it will kill them. Baby chinchillas are actually born precocial. They're born fully fluffed with their eyes open. So most rodents, they have babies and they're pink, their eyes are closed, they look fairly ugly. But when these little things pop out, they look just like this, but smaller. Here, you want a dust bath with your mom? Yes. Let's see. Family bath. Maybe. <laughs> dust, 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 dust. There you go. You're welcome. Any other questions? Does the baby have a name? Um, no. She actually doesn't have a name yet. And I've been calling it a girl, but it's a boy, so. Justin. He just, he just rolled. Dusty. Dusty, it's cute. All in favor of Dusty, raise your hand. <laughs> Dusty it is. All right. Dusty and Chloe. As long as you donate, we'll consider it. <laughs> What's your name? Dolph, if you want. Yes. I don't even know Please. if I introduced My name is Michaela, so. Michaela Rains. I, yeah, who cares about Michaela Rains.